Welcome to England and a whole lot more. It was once connected to Europe because of geography, but ice is melting and sea levels are rising. The population is on the rise, which means more food is needed, and Stonehenge was built, attracting thousands each year. The Celts arrived on the British Isles and soon spread across the lands. The Britons diversified into several different tribes. They have iron weapons and hill forts. But the Romans said, hey, that's a nice island you got over there. Julius Caesar invaded with two legions, but he only left with some money and the Celts said, screw you, Caesar. Another guy named Caligula went to invade with 200,000 men, but he got bored and ordered his men to collect seashells. Emperor Claudius did manage to conquer England, which became a Roman province called Britannia. A number of cities were founded, such as Winchester, Chester, Manchester, Colchester, and other places that don't have the word Chester in it, like Bath, London, and York. A Celtic queen, Boudicca, would rise up against the Romans, but failed, so she killed herself. And the Romans had trouble with the Picts in an area known as Caledonia, so Emperor Hadrian put a wall to protect the lands. They also built a network of roads, water supplies, and sewage systems, but Rome is calling, and the Roman legions leave, allowing an easy target for other invaders. The Germanic Angles, Jutes, and Saxons came over, pushing back many Celts and Britons to Ireland, Scotland, Wales, Cornwall, and Brittany. The Jutes faded away, but the Anglo-Saxons eventually formed a number of kingdoms. Wessex, Mercia, East Anglia, and Northumbria were the big dudes. They also brought some language and wrote a timeline about themselves, and the Popester sent missionaries to convert the new residents. So England gets to join the Jesus crew. The first major raid on England by Vikings was at Lindisfarne Monastery. But soon Danish Vikings landed with a large army, capturing Northumbria and East Anglia. They managed to establish territory known as Danelaw and demanded tribute from Anglo-Saxons called Danegeld. They were about to conquer Wessex, but Alfred the Great, the King of Wessex, said not today, lads. Leading his men into battle, he defeated them at the Battle of Eddington. The Vikings were eventually driven out, and Athelstan became the first King of the English. The Vikings did leave behind something, their language, and they still continued to raid. Sven Forkbeard was king of Denmark, and the English king, Ethelred, killed his sister. And he was like, invasion. And he became king, but he didn't live long, deciding to go riding in order to die. So his son Canute inherited the throne. The Danish were kings for a while, but Edward the Confessor said, I'll be king, and he was helped by an earl, Godwin. So Edward gave his family lands and titles for the help. But Edward was like, you suck. Your whole family sucks. Your child killed his cousin and abducted a nun. So that child walked barefoot all the way to Jerusalem and died on the way back. Edward may have promised the throne to his distant relative, William of Normandy. But it's 1065 and Edward's a potato. So promises the throne to Godwin's son, Harold. It's Norway. And they have a badass, Harald Hardrada, who's coming to invade. Hardrada is backed up by Tostig, the king's brother. They win at the Battle of Fulford, and English Harald is down south, waiting for William of Normandy to arrive. William doesn't arrive, so Harald rushes north. The battle commences, and English king wins. And Norman King William is on his way, and lands in England, right here. Harald rushes down once again. The Normans slaughtered the Anglo-Saxons, and William establishes a new dynasty. Revolts occurred all over England, so castles were put up all around the country. William even marched north and burned the city of York to the ground to put off future revolts. The conquest brought the Doomsday Book, more language, trial by combat, and work on the Tower of London. Fast forward to King John, who lost Normandy. Great job! John signed the Magna Carta, setting the stage for English rights and laws. Heads up, it's knowledge, with two universities, Oxford and Cambridge. But wouldn't it be nice to take control of Wales? Edward I said yes, and conquest complete. He made his son the Prince of Wales, setting up a long line for princes of Wales. He also liked governing, so called the first representative parliament. Next on the list for Edward was Scotland. However, Robert Bruce defeated the English king and declared independence for Scotland. Edward III tried invading Scotland also. Failure again. It's okay though because there's a new long war against France in the Hundred Years' War. 
and Edward gets to use a new technology, the cannon. At the Battle of Crecy, France came with a massive army of cavalry and crossbowmen against the small number of English longbowmen. Surprise, smaller army wins. This is just one battle though, so England win for a bit, then France, then England, then France, then England, insert Black Death somewhere, then France, then England. France wins eventually. Edward III also signed an alliance with Portugal because they're best friends. But bad news, Edward dies. Place your bets on who's going to be the next king. Guess what? It's this guy, Richard II. Now this guy's son deposes him, meaning Henry IV, Henry V, and finally, Henry VI. And these guys are from the House of Lancaster, but spoilers, the House of York still has a claim. Henry VI married Margaret of Anjou, a French princess who was beautiful and ambitious. She hated Richard of York, an advisor to the king. Margaret wanted her children to be the next king and thought Richard, a descendant of Edward III, might get in the way of this. She promoted other advisors for the king, so Richard was sent away to Ireland. Margaret installed a new advisor for the king, the Earl of Somerset. However, Richard of York returned with an army to reform the court. He was installed as protector of the realm after the king suffered a mental breakdown. A year later, Henry recovered and Margaret encouraged Henry to reverse the reforms. Richard of York fled, but soon returned with an army. Although unable to capture the throne, it was promised that his heirs would be the new kings after Henry's death. However, in battles against the Queen's loyalists, Richard of York was killed. His son Edward IV captured the throne and won many battles against the Lancasters. Henry was captured while Margaret fled into exile with her son. However, Edward backed out of a marriage with a French princess and married a widow of a minor noble. This angered Edward's closest ally, the Earl of Warwick. The Earl of Warwick allied with the Lancasters and installed Henry as king again, but Edward recaptured the throne once more, with Henry dying in captivity. Edward V became king, but mysteriously disappeared, so his uncle Richard III took power. But it's not over yet, as Henry Tudor crossed the sea and killed Richard, the last king to die in battle. Henry Tudor was technically at Lancaster, so he married Edward IV's daughter, uniting the houses, and became Henry VII. Henry VIII, King of Studs, married six times, soon beheading a few queens and splitting with the church. He also incorporated Wales into England, giving them representation in Parliament. He declared himself the King of Ireland, although England only controlled an area known as the Pale. It wouldn't be long before the Irish plantations, however, where Irish lands were confiscated and given to the English settlers. Mary I became the first queen, but she's Catholic and killed many people who didn't agree with her religion, giving her the nickname Bloody Mary. Elizabeth came next and she entered a long war with Spain. England supported the Netherlands in their independence movement, so Spain built an armada. But wait, this failed. England went to build its armada, but this also failed. England eventually entered a golden age of exploration, naval triumph, poetry, music, and literature. An English stoner named William Shakespeare may have impressed many people with his poetry, playwrights, and acting. He invented over a thousand words for the English language with words like eyeball, addiction, and swagger. England began its attempts at building an overseas empire by establishing the Roanoke colony. Well, this failed. So the first successful colony was at Jamestown in Virginia, named after the Virgin Queen. Francis Drake also completed his navigation around the world, and John Hawkins began the English slave trade, and Guy Fawkes attempted to blow up Parliament, which is why fireworks are launched into the sky on bonfire night. It's Civil War time, parliamentarians versus royalists, and everyone is juggling sides, until Parliament wins. Charles is executed and Oliver Cromwell dissolves the monarchy. Cromwell's child couldn't keep the soldiers happy, so the monarchy was soon restored. England took Jamaica from Spain and New Amsterdam from the Dutch, which became New York. And oh no, it was a fire in London. Anyway, England got a scientific great person, Isaac Newton, who discovered gravity. And Scotland was doing their own thing, colonizing Nova Scotia and losing it to the French. So finally, 
the Act of Union united the kingdoms of England and Scotland, becoming Great Britain. <laughs> 